offensive by the look of that. He's, yes. It is. I don't think you'd be too happy. Kioya actually put his hand up. Oh, look. <laughs> and just an oh, ace. Wow. <laughs> I didn't see the, didn't oh, see the contact wow. at all. But. It was pretty heavy, and well, uh, just the uh, just lying flat on his back and just applauding the referee. He's been having a bit of a running battle with the refs throughout the game, hasn't he, Brendan? And he plays it very, very hard. He does. He's, he's intense, and he's played all around the world. He's won championships you know, everywhere he's been: in Turkey, Italy, Australia, he's with European, Perth, European championships. European championships, yes. And uh, he's obviously, gold medalist as well, and, and rated you know, by some as the best player in the world. So. Um, he knows a little bit about the rules. <laughs> well, he knows a little bit about the rules, and we hope the referees do as well. I think, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Justin Eveson or Aussie coach Ben Etridge, but one of them just remarked they weren't too thrilled with the selection of one of the refs. He apparently hasn't umpired so far, hasn't refereed so far in the tournament, which is a little bit of a surprise that mm. that, that would occur and uh, would be given uh, the final. He's a surprising selection, perhaps, but... Of course, it is difficult because you often find, Brendan, that, that the same nations that deliver the best players in the world deliver the best referees in the world as well. And, of course, when you have an international game, you have to have neutral referees. And yes, so uh, yes. the Australian and Japanese refs, who probably get more practice than some of the others uh, and more experience, aren't able to referee this match. Yeah, that's, that's correct, Darren. Uh, and at a higher standard, the domestic leagues in those countries are stronger, Japan and Australia. The game is, is just played quicker if you if you watch the, the earlier games, you know, the Malaysians and the Kuwaits and even the Korean and, and Chinese game are just, just slower than this. This is, this is a dynamic game here. And uh, perhaps the refs having a little bit of trouble keeping up. Oh, thrown up there. It was an attempt from Kioya. Couldn't finish it. Latham just pushing so hard to get down and make position for Eveson to pass in the ball. Great work from Norris. Well, Eveson throws up the shot. It's a foul on Nakazawa. That's his fourth. Number 12 there, Masato Nakazawa. Hasn't scored in the match. And he's got four fouls. And we see there the foul trouble for Japan. 20 personal fouls against Japan. Just nine to Australia. And if we look at the free throw shooting, this won't be foul shots, but Australia's had 22 free throw attempts. Japan have only had six. And uh, when the margin in the game is 13, you can see there on that graphic that that's how many more free throws Australia have made. Oh, it's nice. a crucial difference. That's, that's a beautiful sure touch is. from Eveson. Yeah, inside, outside again from Eveson there. He can do it all. And that was Brad Ness there. We just saw a shot of... Uh, some action back live. The foul has been called. It's going to be free throws to Japan. But there's Brad Ness. Uh, obviously not too thrilled with his new ah. chair. They're taking it apart. A few repairs there. And he's actually going to hop into Justin Eason's chair by the looks yeah, of this. Does look like it. Oh, they're taking a wheel off it or something. Taking Justin's wheel to put on Brad's chair. Spare parts? Yes. Oh, or the opposite. They're putting it onto Justin's chair. By the looks of it, maybe that's what it is. Well, we've seen the Tour de France with uh, the trailing cars and, uh, and, of course, the running repairs during a match. It's the same situation here with Justin Easton and Brad Ness and everyone's lending a hand. <laughs> Clear. And they just raised their <laughs> arms just like a Formula One pit crew. It was fantastic. Oh, it was pretty quick. You see the back wheels, they get knocked around a fair bit, but the front wheel, you don't, don't see that too often. But uh, obviously some damage done there at some point. And it, it was out around or a chip's come out of it or something like that. And oh, they're back on it again now. Sean Russell with his first minutes. He's number six, passed it to Latham. <laughs> too hard off the window. The Japanese again making the Aussies shoot from outside. They, they're just keeping them... Oh, wow. A bit of contact here in front of us. And the foul's on Kiyoya, number 11 for Japan, is Jeremy Doyle. And great to see five Australians, yes. all five Australians going over to help up Jeremy Doyle. Teamwork from the Australians there. He's one been one of, the, one of the finds of the tournament, hasn't he? Oh, he certainly has, yes. Uh, he, he's come in, he, he's played a couple of other games, but this is his first sanctioned tournament that he's played in. And he, he's really stepped up to the mark. He, he's got a spot in the starting five. He's knocked down a few nice shots from outside. We saw one earlier there today. And also working very well with the higher, percent, higher point players, higher classification players, to get them inside, in the key, under the basket for, for easy, easy points for Australia. He made his debut for Australia back in June over in the UK at the Paralympic World Cup, a tournament that Australia won. There's Latham. Beautiful that time. 
Coach Edridge starting to rotate through the bench a little bit more now. He's, he's got a few, a few of the, the rookie type players on in Eric Horry here and uh, Sean Russell as well. Forte, there's seven minutes to go and it's a 17 point margin. Australia scored the last nine and Japan hasn't troubled the scorers in the final term. But Naoki Yasu might make that change. Rockstar. He does. Just look at the ink all over him and uh, obviously the fancy glasses and he's got spinning discs on the wheels, hence the nickname. But he hasn't seen a lot of court time. But he does well there. Yasu scored 17 points in a match against Malaysia. It's a pretty impressive rig he's got going on. Sure is, isn't it? As Mass yeah. substitutions here from the Japanese, Darren. Yeah, five on, five off. He, Coach Iwasa, he has to roll the dice now. I mean, if it, the, the game is just about gone, and uh, it's a it's a 15 point margin, six and a half minutes to go. Uh, why not just throw all your starters back on and, and try the and Aussies respond in, in kind, Darren. Yes. They do. Justin Eveson and Brad Ness Jeremy coming Doyle. back. Sean Norris, Jeremy Doyle. Just a little bit of tit for tat there, <laughs> clearly from Ben Etrich. What you can do, I can do better. Although uh, Jeremy Doyle a little bit ambitious. Oh no, he's just been, I thought he was being called off. He's just been called uh, back into the short, back into the long corner there. So it's starting fives returning for the last six and a half minutes. Doyle, he's showed, shooting the ball well today. He'll probably want that one back. Yeah, see, they left him open there. Uh, took the shot, he knocked one down from the other side of the basket. Uh, not on this occasion, but the Aussies luckily get the ball back again. And get to set up an, another offense. Four seconds on the shot clock, so they need to do this very quickly. Brendan Eveson in the lane, he'll go over. Good defense there, great chair position. Mm. It was Mia Jima. Justin will probably ask a question about that. Well, I'm sure Justin will ask the question about it. But it wouldn't be good to stop him going through there. I mean, he's a very skillful player, but the referees, they've got the whistle. He's sort of looking around for somebody to talk to, and. Uh, I, I think the referees are pretty happy to just, you know, let him roll away and ignore him, ignore his pleas, ignore his claims. Ball over Fuji over there, big Brad Ness, getting a chair on Fujimoto, making him take an outside shot. That's what the Aussies have been looking for and, and pushing the floor now with the, the Perth boys up the middle of the court. Into Brad, under the basket, tall timber. We've knocked this down? Yes. And he does. Playing to the strengths of Australia again. We've seen that all week. And I'll keep going back to that. Keep going back. Grind out this win. Only five points to Brad Ness. He's been Australia's leading scorer all week, but looks like he'll be pipped at the post in terms of that title by this man, Justin Eveson, who just flicks the ball forward. That was a little bit of an odd decision there from uh, Eveson. I think, yeah, last minute he'd rather throw the ball away than get an offensive foul. It's probably, probably a good choice. I mean, an offensive foul is going to be a turnover anyway, so might as well get rid of it and shot, stop the chair. Fujimoto. Oh, oh. They don't want him to light up. They want to get that's what he's on for. Oh, it's a 15 point margin. Good ball movement by the Japanese. Shingo Fuji, he's been a crucial player. He's got four assists. Able to get a mismatch there, we could see, on Jeremy Doyle. So the lower classification player. Good play from Fujimoto to, to post up a lower point player. A couple of substitutions for Australia. Pisons and Horry on for Doyle and Norris. Four points on, four points off. The Aussie coach just keeping the balance right. Careless turnover last time down, and the Japanese have looked after the ball really well since quarter time. And this man, Shingo Fuji, has had a lot to do with it. He's controlled the tempo, eight points as well. And the Jap Japanese have scored the last couple of baskets. It's back to 13 points. You wouldn't say it's worrying or danger time for Australia, but they won't want to lapse for much longer as. They're in a little bit of trouble here. Six seconds on the shot clock. Now three. Eveson's going to have to throw it up. It's a violation. Not the greatest offense there from the Aussies, but Brad and Justin were caught together down on the baseline on one side with the other three players just floating. As we see, Fuji, is it? It was Fujimoto. It was a great pass in from Miyajima. Timed it to perfection. And Rio Fujimoto will go to the line. So a few lapses from Australia. 
just open the door for the Japanese. 13 point game if the Japanese can get a couple of stops and make these couple of free throws and another basket or two. Who knows? Well, there's plenty of time left. And the thing for Australia is their offense hasn't been anywhere near as uh, their offensive options haven't been anywhere near as diverse and varied as they have in previous games. No, the Japanese have done a good job keeping them outside and keeping the tall timber from Australia from under the basket so they couldn't really blow this game out. But Rio Fujimoto has been ordinary from the free throw line. He's 0 for 4. There's... It's an unusual call, I guess. Uh, there's no danger on Mikey here at all, but I guess he thought that the offensive team, the rollers, were a disadvantage, so he stopped the play so they could go and get him up. Well, that is a strange call. I thought the rule was simply that because it is part and parcel of the game that the players' chairs are knocked over from time to time. I did think the rule was that it was only referees only stopped it if a player was in danger. I oh, know. I've certainly sat back there, which is not yeah. there. So We've seen it plenty of times yeah. throughout the tournament. Yeah. Perhaps that comes down to some of these inexperienced referees again. So the Australians catch a break. Good work, Mikey Hartnett. Oh, Brad Ness. wasn't it? Great stuff. And the low classification player there, we can see he set that up for Brad Ness. Straight through. Half of that basket's Mikey's, half of it's Brad's. Perth boys working together there. Made Fuji look a bit silly, actually. Well, it was just brilliant. Michael Hartner just set the screen for Ness and Fujimoto. He did really well there, but they'll be doing that quite a bit as well, Brennan, as Here we, we see it. Watch Michael Hartnett. Sets the seal. And then just rolls around the front of Fujimoto's chair. It was beautiful. And they're going to be teammates in Italy for the next six months or so, as that's another great pass. Ness into Eves and... The stars doing their thing. Yes, they are now. There's a whole string of the Australian team going over to Europe to play the European season and earn some pretty serious dollars over there as well, Brendan. Yeah, not bad if you can get it, eh? The Japanese shooting for three now. Yeah, that was pretty ordinary, ordinary attempt. Game. So it's a 20, oh, sorry, it's a 15 point game. 15 points, three minutes. You think the Aussies have it in hand now. But the Japanese won't give up. There's some pride on the line here. They don't want to be flogged either. As Grant Lyons knocks down a nice shot from the foul line there. Japanese decide to leave him alone. Played, over, take two. played over 100 games for Australia as Grant Misens and a couple of Paralympic games. Hasn't been one of the big scorers this week. Pretty handy commentator though, he? He is. <laughs> he is. Mind you, he's had a pretty handy replacement as well, Brendan. As, uh, oh, Darren, flattery. <laughs> Tetsuya Miyajima put that away and... Uh, there's a just connection there between Brad Ness and Get Miyajima. Off. And Brad Ness just unceremoniously throws him away. No malice in that, but I, I don't think he was perhaps as gentle as he might have been either. Yeah, yeah, the chairs get tangled together at times and... Uh... No, you're not mates out there, but you've got to get untangled somehow, so... <laughs> he almost went over backwards. Yeah, well, this has been a great game, hasn't it? It's it has been. Very entertaining game, and, and the Japanese are really taking it to Australia. It's uh, 15 points. I don't know if that's totally indicative of the, of the, the quality of the competition. Three but, seconds in the key against Brad Ness. I guess a little bit of foul trouble in that third quarter is probably what really, really hurt Japan when, when Fujimoto got into foul trouble and, and being their main scoring threat uh, played into Australia's hands. But Australia made that happen. I mean, we can't take that away from Australia. They, they played hard all game, and, and they make it happen. They make the luck. It's not good luck that they win. It's not good luck that they're the... There's no fluke that they're number one in the world. It's because they work hard uh, on and off the court. Got great support program, great support from organisations within Australia as well. And it all comes together in a, in a, a great program, and, and we see the results of that on the court here today. Well, it'll be interesting. We'll uh, hopefully Olivia McGrath will be giving us some interviews after the game. It'll be interesting to find out from the Aussies uh, what their program will be leading up to the World Championships next year uh, in Birmingham. They've never won. They've won World Championship medals. They've won two Paralympic gold medals, uh, but they've never won the World Championship gold. And they'll go into the tournament uh, with the USA. You would you would imagine as as the favourites. As uh, finally Fujimoto, when the game is gone, makes his first free throw. He was he's one for six. When you get to those tournaments, there's no gimme games, or very rarely is there a gimme game, and uh, it'll be very tough on any given day. Any one of probably you know, five, six, seven, eight teams can, can take out a tournament like that, depending upon the form of the players and you know, an odd call goes your way or not. So everything, all the ducks have to be in line to take out a, a top tournament like that. Got to go up, two seconds, not enough. Not quick enough, Australia. So a turnover. And as I 
said a little bit earlier in the call, the Japanese have looked after the ball brilliantly. It was six turnovers against Japan and only one to Australia in the early stages. It's now 12 against Japan and 10 against Australia. Yeah, Australia's caught up there. They, that wouldn't be their KPI. They'd probably use 10 or 8 for the game, I would think. So they'd be looking for no more turnovers from here on Australia. Fujimoto from outside. Well, they've kept him down again. His tournament average has been 25. He only scored 18 against Australia in the pool match, and he's got 17 here again today, Fujimoto. Hartnett now for Australia. Just using the ball, using the clock. Smart play from the Australians. This is basketball IQ. Brad Ness doing the job of a smaller man, setting the screen there for Eveson. Missed the layup. Fujimoto with the rebound. Quick pass from Fuji up to Masabuchi. Can he push and collect it? Keeps it alive. But Misens scoops it up for Australia. Up to Ness. 14 points is the margin. The countdown's on now, just winding this down, the Australians. Taking care of business. Working the ball around. We see Justin and Grant's going in for a layup here. Well, unable Holds to out. finish. Ness does so and he headbutts it away. <laughs> As again, there's a bit of a tangle in the chairs. And that looked like a bit of a sigh from Coach Ben Ettridge. Uh, there'd be a degree of relief as Rio Fujimoto fouls out of the game. He's had a great game. He's really taken it to the Aussies today and, and made a game of it. 17 points, 8 rebounds for Rio Fujimoto. As we'll see the foul, him just contesting the rebound. And Ness <laughs> scores the goal and then scores the goal. It's been a tough game. And uh, there's some adrenaline pumping out there. You'll have another chance? No, it's off his chair. <laughs> Timeout called by Japan here with 39.7 seconds remaining on the clock. Not really sure what they hope to achieve out of this timeout, Brendan. Obviously wanting to work on something. I mean, they want to take take something away from this tournament. They probably came here knowing Australia were the, were the number one in the world, knowing they were ranked number seven. They've taken it to Australia today. They don't have Fuji on the floor. It's an opportunity for them to try something against the world's number one and, and see how it comes off and work on their game and, and their process as well. There is Australian coach Ben Etridge. We're going to be heading into this timeout to see what he has hey, to say for the final we're time. Expose Grant a little bit here, so we're back in our teacup, but Grant's out just so they don't get that easy look. So we've got to talk to him and make sure they don't get him picked out straight away. So just out about halfway out, all right? They're going to launch, then they'll probably foul. So strong on the rebound. Let's go. Yours and Brad's. The Australians come back to the floor. Get a big cheer from uh, their fans. Yes, Mohammed Nizar Mohammed with that. Uh, well, those are the legs of the 15 year old, and I'm sorry, I've just got to look up his name again from Kuwait. <laughs> He's the youngest man in the tournament by far. Hamad, sorry, it's Mohammed Al Gharib, the 15 year old with two prosthetic limbs. He Played the last two minutes against Australia. And uh, as, uh, he's just a bit of joking amongst the Kuwaitis. Oh, they're having a great time, the Kuwaitis, aren't they? They won a game. They won their first game today. They came in fifth. Good on them. They're enjoying it. They're, they're celebrating. Mohamed El Garib uh, popped out of his chair a couple of times in the two or three minutes that he was on the court, Brendan. And he was. Uh, it was great to have him out there. And great for him. He... he uh, He's also a medalist in track and field from the World Junior Championships this year. So uh, a bright future in, in what looks to be a, a couple of different forms of sport for the young man. Yeah, it's great to see. Obviously a very talented athlete and uh, trying to make his mark here in the wheelchair basketball as well. Great experience for him and he had something in the years to come to the Kuwaiti team. Yeah, they can become more competitive. He's had a good look at what he needs to strive for. The world's number one in the rollers here tonight. So uh, something for him to, to work on as he goes home. He can take these, the memories of this home and... Uh, and who knows, down the track, the next qualifying tournament, the one after, we might see him, yeah, coming up and, and taking it to the Aussies. Can Shingo Fuji finish off a tournament for Japan from outside? The big bomb is short, and so that ends the match, and that ends the championship. Australia are the champions once more.
The Rollers for the fifth successive time take out the Asia Oceania Championship. They defeated a gallant Japan by 17 points in the final. It was Australia 68, Japan 51. The crowd applaud an excellent performance by this Rollers outfit. They've proved it again that they are the best team in this region and the last time it was tested, they were the best team in the world. Justin Eveson led the Aussies with 25 points. Sean Norris had 18, 19, rather. And a successful tournament. Six starts for Australia, six wins. This was the closest of them all, Brendan Dowler. Yes, it certainly was, Darren. It, it didn't all go the Aussies' way, as it did the last, in the pool game when Australia played them. The, the Japanese, uh, they were missing a player then, and Fuji didn't have a particularly happy game. He had a much better game tonight, I believe. Uh, but again, the, the big game players from Australia stood up. Eveson and Norris and Ness. And even though uh, Brad got nine points in the end, you know, his presence and his uh, defensive work on uh, big Fujimoto went a long way to getting this win. So the big name players from Australia stood up, and uh, as, we know, as we know, they can. We'll have a look at some of the highlights of this man, Justin Eveson. 25 points, six assists and a dozen rebounds. He really showed it when it, when it counted, didn't he? Here's the replay of the, 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 the camera hit. Oh, spectacular. It was brilliant, wasn't it? This is one of the highlights of the game, and it wasn't even anything to do with the basketball. <laughs> oh, I love it, love it. But that's the intensity he plays with. You know, there's, there's no take no prisoners. There he is having a go over and nearly taking us out in our score bench. All right, Justin Eason, uh, he was the best player in the world and he showed why today. He was the MVP of the game and he's now with Olivia McGrath. Right over, <laughs> Justin, Japan certainly brought their A game tonight. Look, they did. They came ready to play and uh, they made some adjustments from when we played them earlier in the week and, uh, and they played really well. Really good credit to them. You certainly played a fantastic game, MVP of the match. What do you, how do you rate your personal performance? Look, I, I do the same thing I do every time I come out for a game, push 100% and, you know, hopefully get a few baskets and try and help my teammates to score. And uh, that's, the way, that's the way we play with the Rollers and I think that's a, a, a big success of ours. Now, Japan with a few foul troubles, how did that change the game? Yeah, look, we, uh, we went to the line a couple of times. They played physical. I think they got to do that to, to match it with our big guys. And unfortunately for them, you know, the big guy Rio got off the court. He's their star player. And, and, uh, and we knocked our free throws down, which was important. And we took it from there. Uh, fifth consecutive Asia Oceania title. You guys have qualified first for the, the World Championships. What happens between now and then now? Uh, we go back and, and recover a little bit and uh, we'll assess where we're at, look at the when the pool groups come out and see who we're facing and, uh, you know, we're going back to the track. We're going back to hard work and in the gym, on the court and, uh, and preparing for, for the tournament that we got next year and then, and then World Champs. And what about you personally? Are you heading off overseas? Where are you going to be in the next six months? Uh, I'll be playing in Turkey for Galatasaray again, um, but I'll be a fly-in, fly-out basis, so, you know, I've got... Uh, a little bit of travelling to do, but you know that's the way it is, and, and um, you know that's a big part of my preparation in that for that major tournament. Well, congratulations! Thanks so much for the week. No worries. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Well played, Justin Easton. Thanks for watching, indeed. It, it's been a great tournament for him and for the Australians. Undefeated, six wins from six starts. As we have a look at the summary of this match, Brendan Dowell. Yeah, job done there by the Rollers, and uh, they'd be pretty content, pretty happy with that. It was a tough game, that, that last game, and that's that's what the Aussies want. I mean, they want some tough games. It's not going to be all their way when they go to the World Championships next year, and uh, we can see the stats there. And not, not overly convincing to the Aussies by any means. Their shooting percentage is 1% below the, below the Japanese. They had 10 turnovers to 12 by the Japanese. So the big, big telling factor is probably the fouls there, with the Japanese with 23 fouls. Yes, Justin Eason's stats we've already spoken about. The Japanese did a really good job shutting down some of the other uh, key Australian players. Well, they certainly did. I mean, the, the star, Justin Eason and Shawnee Norris, they still still stopped toward there, but Brad Ness, they were able to shut him down pretty convincingly. But Brad, yes, I, he I just wandered by, just yes, strolled by and tried to give you a bit of stick as well, oh, Brad. He did. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice, nice new chair you got there, Brad. I only got scratched tonight, but uh, he had a big impact defensively. And it's the whole team. And while we talk about these guys here, it's everybody on the court at the time creating. We saw Mikey Hartner creating there for Brad Ness. We saw uh, JD knock an outside shot down there as well. So everyone contributes. The guys came off the bench, played some good D as well, gave the other guys a rest. There are the stats for Japan. Fujimoto leading the scorers, as we've already spoken about. Things are ready for the presentation. Uh, it's going to be conducted by Basketball Australia. We'll cross down to that now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, can I have your attention, please? We'd like to thank Q1 
Kuwait, Malaysia, China, Korea, Japan and Australia for participating in this qualification series. And we'd like to congratulate Australia, Japan and Korea on representing Asia Oceania at the 2010 World Championships in Birmingham next year. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the president of IWBF Asia Oceania, Mr. Yuchi Watanabe, the CEO of Basketball Australia, Larry Singstock, one of Australia's greatest Paralympians and Hall of Fame member for Basketball Australia, Mr. Kevin Coombs, and the Secretary General for IWBF Asia Oceania, Greg Love. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Love will now present the medals to the championship referees. Wu Singyol from Korea. <laughs> Chie Xu Fei from Taipei. And Yep Po Book from Malaysia. Basketball Australia Hall of Fame member, Mr. Kevin Coombs, will present the medals to the third place team in the 2009 IWBF Oceania Championships. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Korea. <laughs> the Korean team, Ho Yong Kim, Dong Hyun Kim, he Yong Cho, Dong Ryo Lee, Kwang Yab Ko, Kyung Sik Chang, Sung Hyun Cho, Chi Won Lee, Sang Ha Baek, Cho Su Kim, Jin Nam Kim, and Yang Mu Kim. The officials for Korea, the head of delegation, Mr. Shin Yun Ho, head coach Han Sa Hyun, the coach is Lee Jang Gwon, trainer Kim Yu Jung, and the staff member Kim Min Jung. Ladies and gentlemen, please, once again, a big round of applause to Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, now Larry Sengstock, the Chief Executive of Basketball Australia, will present the medals to the runners up. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, from the team Japan. <laughs> Shingo Fuji, Tomomi Masabuchi, Kazuyuki Tokarin. Yosefu Kogo, Satoshi Sato, Akimasa Suzuki, Naoki Yasu, Kazuyuki Kyoya, Masato Nakazawa, Tetsuya Miyajima, Daisuke Tsuchiko, and Ryo Fujimoto.